Hello. Howdy. Hey, how's it going, man? I'm doing good. How about you? Eh, I've been better. I'm dealing with a little bit of a medical thing, but um, you know, as part of the you know the pre-debate uh, platitude tradition, I want to bring up the fact that I have actually been using you as a stick to beat other creators with. Oh, fantastic! I love being a stick. I love being stick-like in nature. Yeah, I, I wanted to say that after our last conversation, your audience was incredibly kind. Not only not only did they not reach out to me with any sorts of racisms and actually, for the most part, were good faith. I think I got maybe one bad faith DM. Um, they're also willing to be very critical of you, even though they're... And, and I just want to point out that, like, streamers, you are the audience you create. When I debate Destiny or Sansol or even Hunter or interact with anybody in kind of the DGG orbit, I get hate rated and, you know, lots of N-bombs, lots of like, you know, just silly kind of stuff that you kind of expect. But Wacky not from stuff, your... right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But not from your audience because you, this is exactly... And, and because of your, Scott, your size, it kind of gives them no excuse for why their audiences are the way that they are. So again, you know, hats off to you, dude. You did a great job over there. Thank you. I appreciate that. We'll see if uh, we'll see if your your assessment of my community um, changes after this conversation. There's always always the possibility to disappoint. You know, there's a limit to how good you can get, but there's never a limit to how bad you can get. We'll see. And that's and that's the best part of life, right? That was, that's the space. Oh yeah, um, there's always a pit beneath you, of course. <laughs> and generally, I just want I just want to say that like I do think that you have some blind spots when it comes to race, which I don't. I want to just say that I don't really think they're that big a deal, and I don't think that these these criticisms that I'm raising are something that I would do. Like I would never go after you for these perspectives. You know what I mean? Like I, I we've got so many bigger fish to fry. You've just been talking about it recently, so I just wanted to get a chance to maybe discuss and meet in the middle if we could. You know. Yeah, I saw that um, there was a conversation between Shark Three Hundred Zero and um, mm -hmm. um, Endless. Endless, thank you, Endless. Yeah. Where I where I felt like I felt like Endless was was basically just doing, he was doing the meme, uh, which I, I I didn't like very much. Uh, I, I I mean I've had this I've had this general set mm -hmm. of conversation before, right? This is like a thing that I'm kind of known for now, unfortunately, mm -hmm. in the broader left, where it's like I'm the anti-racist who's always willing to call out black people when I think they're being anti-white, you know, which is a phenomenal <clears throat> reputation to hold in this space. Um, I just, this, this, I see this shit like crop up time and time again, you know? And my, mm -hmm. my main issue is like the endless guy, right? I don't think that mm -hmm. he's like a brain neo-Nazi or whatever, you know, smart, good people have blind spots and stuff. And often those blind mm -hmm. spots are cultivated. Um, and I feel like it, it's kind of cultivated in this case by the fact that when we see racist shit being done by black people, like white liberals don't really call it out because, you know, they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to get in trouble. And w when it doesn't get called out, you know, you get the predicted effect of there not being any implicit pressure to not have bad ideas, which is that those ideas propagate and worsen. So we have this Whoa. like consistent blind spot. I don't know. Well, I, I just think that that's a perspective thing. I think that a lot of the issues that you guys label, and, and this is where it kind of comes to, it's got to come to our idea of what is racism. I know that a lot of people have, like like you've said, I, and please correct me, I don't want to ever put words in your mouth, but you, one of the things that you've said is you don't like the power prejudice thing because you feel like you don't gain any utility by using it and you actually, you and there's no utility loss the way that you use it, right? Yeah, I don't think that you lose anything mm. by acknowledging that black people can be racist against white people and just saying that it's not systemic racism because oh. it's not it's not a reinforcement of like a broader social trend. It's just interpersonal. So so this is where I think things do get lost. Right. Um, when, when you say racism, um, I, and, and again, I don't want to put any words in your mouth. I think that you mean um, a race, uh, a bias for or preference for a specific race and so, some sort of decision making factor, not the belief that um, one's race is superior to other races, even though one is the other, but the other isn't the necessarily the one, right? Yeah, I think that the belief in superiority is almost always implicit, though. I've never seen anybody <clears throat> say, oh, yeah, black and white people aren't better or worse. They're just different. 
with them not like really saying that one was better than the other. Usually white, because usually that line is pushed by white supremacists who are trying to avoid accusations of racism. They do the same thing with women, right? Like they'll say, <laughs> well, I don't think men or women are better than each other. They're just different and complementary." And then it's like, okay, well, they think that men are more um, aggressive and smarter and more capable of doing things and they're better in every way. And then it's like, oh, well, what are women good at? Well, they're great at being barefoot and they're great at like siring children, you know, mm -hmm. or, or, or mothering right. children. It's like, okay, well, you clearly really mean that the man is better there. You're not, you're, you're just like walking around it, you know? Right, right, right. I don't think that's the way that they're using it, though. I think that there is a fundamental belief that all humans are humans, but we do exist on a planet that does have a colorist hegemony, and that colorist hegemony does permeate all like all of society there's nowhere there's nowhere in the world that i can go and not be black there's nowhere that white privilege doesn't exist there's nowhere that um and, and that's where we start to and that's where we start to to lose to lose the understanding because i think that first of all i think that when we, you and i as as more let's call us um academics we when we use the term as bias i think a lot of people listening don't believe that i i think they like you're saying that you hear that it's um they believe that if there is any bias or, or prejudice for a specific race, that they that it comes from an intrinsic belief that one's race is superior. But I mean, isn't it not possible? Like, 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 for example, like the biracial thing, for example, there are plenty of non my race is superior reasons that black people feel for wanting to not engage in specifically for themselves and um not having biracial children which biracial children is a weird term because those children are just black um that's the way that society treats them and i don't think that and i think that when we use racism the way that you use it the um that nuance is kind of taken away does, yeah, does that make sense it does but i i would disagree with you i think that if you if you're mm -hmm. black and you want your children to be black as well like i i think mm -hmm. that it's just fundamentally racist in the same way that I would say that about a white person. You can argue, so you, so there, there are reasons here though. You can argue okay, that it would be more socially difficult to have like a, a, a mixed race relationship and mixed race child. I totally get that. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, if somebody lived in a racist area and they were like, okay, listen, I'm, I'm not racist, but like, holy shit, I'm white. And if I had a black boyfriend and had a child with that black boyfriend, like our lives would be so much more difficult. Um, mm -hmm. I, I understand that. I get that. But there are there are limits to that, um, and it's very clear are, to me. What are the limits? The limit to me is that oftentimes it's not a practical thing. Um, for example, the stuff that Shark and Endless were talking about, which was that Twitter post that had like eighty thousand likes, which was the whole mm -hmm. like um, look at all like over two generations, children being made more and more light skinned for mixed race relationships. That had nothing mm -hmm. to do with like the difficulties of raising light skinned children. Because by the end of that set of relationships, that baby was white, meaning that they would have the least difficulty. It's no longer a practical I, issue. At this I don't point, think just, I don't think that any of us see that baby as white. the The last baby at the end there was just white. Like the skin tone of that of the last baby there was um was was like I mean I guess I don't know how they'll grow up to look or whatever, but I assume that by that point they would just be white. There, there, there is a, there is a thing where it's, it's the, it's the one out, it's the one uh, drop rule, right? Like, if there are any predominantly black features on a child, they actually like society tends to view them as black, even though they could be incredibly fair skin. And I think that that's something like, like this is something um, that I know a lot of biracial people deal with the idea that they never get accepted into whiteness but they do get accepted into blackness because they're othered by white people because again race is a social construct and blackness is just the othering of of a specific group of people and they're othered in that way therefore accepted among but, black people even though obviously colorism exists light skins versus dark skins but that's all a response to white supremacy in that convo endless was basically mm -hmm. referring to this baby as white and in the comments of this twitter post they're talking about how that girl shouldn't be able to use the n-word like the whole the premise of this post like is people talking about how the baby is white now and is no longer black so it seems like and i agree that people are still going to do like the one drop rule or whatever but that doesn't mean we should have to do it like 
I, I don't think I don't think that in listings that baby is black. Um, not that that baby is white. I'd have to go back and like go through it, but because I've had direct conversations with him, and that's not kind of what he felt. But I also understand like the use of the N word by light skin uh, by light skin white pe- um, black people is an issue sometimes within our because there's a lot of light skin dark skin wars that come from racist the racist white supremacy hegemony like light skins versus dark skins is just a thing and light skinned people because of their proximity to whiteness tends tend to tokenize themselves and white people tend to accept those groups and use them as a wedge to divide um minority groups on colorist lines like so this is actually where a lot of the model minority stuff comes from too like using a lighter or a group that is closer to whiteness to drive a wedge between that group and the their dark skin like not other non-white um counterparts like kind of like the rwandan genocide if you think about it, like the belgian colonization coming in and choosing light-skinned people to be uh civilians and then using that as a wedge to make sure that t- these two groups are separated which makes them easier to colonize i i understand that but the problem is mm-hmm. i i think we're we're th- there's kind of like a broader like obfuscation going on right here um mm-hmm. th- th- endless was it. talking about like the product of interracial marriage and child rearing meaning that yes. there would no longer be black people like him he wasn't talking yes, about he, the difficulty he's talking about visibility yeah, right visibility but he wasn't Dark talking skin. about the difficulty of raising mixed race children in a racist society he was angry that his skin tone wouldn't be represented in the future if everyone had mixed race relationships the wait the, i just want to be clear the okay problem let, let, go ahead that, and finish my apologies it's okay the problem here that i have is that it seems like a lot of black people are doing the equivalent of a white person being like yeah i just want my kid to look like me what's wrong with that you know it's not racist what, what's wrong with wanting your kid to look like you you know and then when like pressed in it they're like um um, well, actually, the only reason I believe that is because I'm very concerned about the sociopolitical difficulties of raising a mixed race child in this environment. And like, that's bullshit. That's not why they care about having. A, but that's not why they want their kid to be white. They want their kid to be white because they're racist. Like, that's the real reason. Well, well, well that, no, no, this is this is exactly why the term racism. And this is where where I'm saying that when you describe the two events as racist, it flattens the expression because you are absolutely right. When you reach out to white people because they're on the top of the hierarchy, they don't mean when they they're against mixed race, um, mixing race, that they don't mean ever that they oh they just want preferences for their children they absolutely want to ban interracial marriage make sure black people don't exist why because they're on top of the hierarchy because there's nothing else for them to do besides that but for black people on the bottom of the hierarchy endless was very much talking about uh political visibility in the future the existence of dark-skinned people in the future increases black political uh black political visibility much like the trans much like trans visibility like if you have more visible trans people it increases trans political power right i don't don't care at all about these things are equivalent to me white people believe that white racists believe the same thing that's the whole great replacement theory which he literally believes in the great replacement theory is the idea that white people will be politically disempowered because jews or other ne'er-do-wells will compel us through social conditioning to have sex with and reproduce with darker skin people thus reducing our uh genetic uh, uh purity and also our social uh distinction which leads to us being politically weaker in the future you're making the same argument you're just doing it from like b- beneath the glass ceiling rather than above it no, no, no. Well, i i realize that i realize the arguments are the same but the reason what you're doing is you're doing an equivalence of anti-whiteness and anti-blackness which is a little bit of a colorblind thing right no i am so yeah. what you're yeah, yeah. So what you're saying, because the thing is, is you are correct from their perspective when they say those things, when white people say those things, of course, there's no justification for that because they don't have to worry about their political power. Be- they, they're literally just worried about not being on the top of the higher. It, it, they don't really believe in, in the fear that they're going to lose their political their political power but historically this has been something that's done to black people black people have been bred for lighter skin they have been selected there has been political power lots all you have to do is look at hollywood for example like the selection of light skin has had dampened the power of black people in hollywood it was only once we started getting more black people in uh more different shades of black people in in like the late 90s that you started seeing more movements and and again more even older black actors 
finally coming out and talking about the issues of um, the the disproportion of power that's going on in Hollywood, right? Yeah, I, I think these things are 100% identical in every respect. I don't think that a bad mm. ideology becomes more defensible just because you're not at the top of the hegemon. We're also painting over the mm. real consequence of this because we're talking about it in a broad idealized sense, but the practical mm. on-the-ground effect of this belief is parents bullying their children into marrying and reproducing with people of the same race. It's people who love each other being pulled apart by families who don't want them to dilute their skin tone and gene pool. So this is where we disagree 100%. Because when black people talk about this, even though if you look at the Pew Research study, you'll see that black people actually believe more than white people that race mixing will cause damage to like society but when you go back and you look at the gallup poll which is just for interracial marriage black people are almost ubiquitous like almost like it's almost 100 percent of us believe in that interracial marriage should be allowed the difference in those beliefs should be is allowed legally but there's legally. still dis yeah but but i don't care just about that if you're still socially discouraging it i think that's an issue too i don't think that my point is that it's not being necessarily socially discouraged i understand that it comes up in ways that look like it's being discouraged but you'll see that like for example there are no mobs of black people going around and attacking interracial couples that happens at the hands of white people so, and that all, dynamic exists because of the difference in the hierarchies. I'm only criticizing the ideology here, not the extent to which it is expressed. There are fewer serial mm -hmm. killers than there are racists, but that doesn't mean we can't talk about how serial killers are bad. Um, second, mm -hmm. second of all, it is true that there are more white lynch mobs, but the idea that like um, uh, uh, black people aren't bullied by other black people over interracial relationships, or that mixed race children don't often get treated like shit by black people because they're seen as like a genetic compromise that is, isn't fully a part of the black community. These are real things. Like these are undeniably real things that happen to a lot of people. I've had mixed race people reach out to me and they're like, holy shit, dude, it's insane how many people are like anti-mixed race kid. Yeah, co like woke color, colorism colorism and and that's and that still exists and that still exists for like two dark skin middle middle class upper middle class black people too like the idea that they're somehow that somehow they're distanced from the the disproportionate way that black people are treated at the bottom of society that if you have any distance to that 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 somehow invalidates your blackness this is a response to black uh, white supremacy right because there have been and there continues to be a a favoritism for light skinned people among black people and they are used as a stick to beat um, darker skinned black people. That doesn't make that it OK that the two groups go after each other. It's absolutely it's not a fun time when light skinned and dark skinned black people go after each other. But that doesn't mean that both of these things are just a response to white supremacy. Yeah, but either way, if it if it expresses itself in that respect, it should be opposed. I'm only opposed yeah. to the idea of black people trying to gatekeep uh, interracial relationships or discourage people from loving whoever they want or having kids with whoever they want on long racial lines. Uh, it's, I, it's not I, a I just don't see. I guess I just like, don't see it as much as you do. I, I see people that get. I see people that. I see bullying for light skinned people, but I've never. I never see like people openly, like openly and vitriolically say things like, "Hey, don't ever date a white person," because I've seen things like maybe a black woman feels the fact that they're not selected as partners and mates me is because of society, and they I mean, feel like they're being devalued. Dr. But Umar I don't. It's pretty popular. That's like his <clears throat> main line. This tweet which is about preserving the black mm. bloodline had 80,000 likes and a lot of people supporting mm. it. Again, like I don't I don't have any like hardline data on the of the, the the prominence of this um this ideology or whatever, but all I'm I'm only calling it out to the extent that it exists. I've never told my audience that like black people being socially opposed to interracial marriage is as much of a problem as white supremacy because I don't believe that. I'm only saying that mm. to the extent this ideology represents itself, it's pretty much identical to the whole white um yeah. racial purity anti-race mixing uh, white nationalist great replacement myth except you know done for black people instead of white people right but in one situation that myth is real and in another situation it's not and that's what the key motivator there is right it's not real. like you you say you say you say over and over again that you don't think endless as these feelings of like he he worries about raising his like harming his child, but I absolutely think he does. I think that black people think about this just like people in poverty think about what it means to bring a kid into poverty. 
I think that uh, I think that you, they, we even think about it when we're talking about having dark skin kids in the first place, too. And, it, and it's something that comes up within our culture, but it isn't something that has it that is leading leading down the line nope. to. And this is and this is where white people are leading to. Let's erase all the white people. The problem is that's the not language, the, that's not what's where the, it's going. The language you just used essentially was the argument that if it could be proven the Great Replacement was real, that white people would be justified in enforcing racial segregationism and opposing immigration. No, 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 you didn't. You, wait, wait, you did, because to distinguish the validity of the, the this whole set of ideologies for white and black people, you said, okay, well, for black people, it's really happening, which for one, I don't believe so. I don't think there's some international conspiracy to get black people to dilute their bloodline by having sex with white people. The the, the broader It cultural, has happened historically, historically, definitely. Historically, lots of things have happened. Haitians, former slaves, raped and gutted like innocent white women who happened to live like on colonial towns in Haiti. Like lots of stuff happened. Right. But today there isn't a trend because our, our globally, so, like so, our society is white supremacist. Why would a white supremacist mm -hmm. society want black people intermixing with white people? That's the thing we don't want. That's the opposite of what we want. Um, so, so, so it's because of how hegemonies don't necessarily care about individual intentions. It's just like the product of these systems interacting. I think one of the things that you're saying is like, I, I what I'm pointing out, the meaningful difference is black people, when they don't want race mixing, they want it for actual survival. They're not actually asking for laws or anything like that. They, they don't want, they don't want the laws to go away. They don't want their ability to mate with white people to go away. They simply want like their ability. They just simply want black children to not have be raised with issues. Biracial kids raising raising kids away from black black kids away from black people causes issues to them. And that's something that black people have to consider. Like again, this goes into the like having the ability to raise a raise a child well and all those Maybe. things. This Maybe is I different. This is fundamentally different than the idea of I don't want race mixing because I want to erase black people. I mean we no wait wait. The whole we don't want when white people say they don't want race mixing they're not doing it to erase black people they're doing it to preserve white people the tweet that they I'm are definitely is not about, wait yes they are the idea of white nationalism and preserving the white bloodline and the separation of the races is about preservation of the white race not about the elimination of other races there's then no why does it always end viol by violently attacking the race that they're trying to simply quote unquote separate themselves from why does it always end in ethno states or things of that nature? If it's not specifically designed to create a reason, a dog whistle for erasing another race. It, it is because at the end of the day, the only way to maintain the attitudes that you're defending right now is through an ethno state, which is why I think it's kind of myopic of you to argue that it's okay to socially like discourage, um, interracial relationships because it might be difficult to raise a mixed race child when we live in a racially integrated society i don't know what other path forward you can see for like us as a nation but in terms of like what what why white people want to preserve the white bloodline if they wanted to like it, it's about preserving the white the delicate white flower you know um, mm -hmm. this tweet that I'm looking at is about preserving the black bloodline, you know? This mm -hmm. isn't about the difficulty of raising mixed race children. It's specifically about maintaining the purity of, I don't know, high melanin bloodlines or whatever. Um, which is ideologically identical. The only difference is we have more guns than you. But I don't think that makes the mm -hmm. ideology better for you. It just means that we're, ours is more I, I, actionable. I just think that you're looking at it. Uh, you're looking at it differently. When they say uh, they say I I don't want this to happen to my bloodline, end up like this. That's insane. Or two generations of the melanin gone from that bloodline. There's specifically like there is literally cultural and historical pre precedent of like white people of the wealth extra like when black people become wealthy, for example, when black men become wealthy because their distance to wealth generally put your distance to whiteness closer, they're generally going to have more white people, white women in their dating pool, and it leads to the extraction of wealth outside of black culture. This is another, like, these are, there's like, a- This is a, this is also the same argument the white people make. The idea of, it, like, we don't want, like, it, the degenerate it, hoodlums to um, infiltrate our economic systems either. So by keeping things white, we maintain like this is the logic of an ethno state. You're no, giving me but, right but no, 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 the, you, what you're getting, no, 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 this is, this is the key difference here. Nobody is saying that you shouldn't have do the race mixing. They're just saying they don't want to do the. No, that's be that's total bullshit. 
Absolute bullshit. I don't know. When, no, if a white if a white supremacist said something like, "I would never want my bloodline to end up like this," because two generations down the line, right? Because anti whiteness and anti blackness aren't equal. They are. The ideologies are the same here. You're doing the same mm. verbatim. The only difference it, is that we're on top. And the environment that the environments that the, these two groups are in. Absolutely, I think there's a difference between when a black per when a white person goes up to a black person and says "fuck black people" and shoots shoots them, and a black person goes up to a white person and says "fuck black people" and shoots them. One of those people is probably angry for, uh, angry over oppression, and the other one is simply trying to oppress. Yeah, no, there is a meaningful no, difference. It's the same. You're doing the same thing. They're both bad. Mm. It doesn't matter what reason. It doesn't they matter. Have. They are both. They are both bad. Don't get me wrong. No one's saying that these things are good, but there is a meaningful difference in the reason. Like you were saying, the situation with the Haitians. I understand that innocents were killed in the in the Haitian Revolution, and nobody thinks that innocent people killed is good. But do you think? that like do you, do you, does that not get a different motivation like if for example if the white slave owners in that area killed an innocent pregnant black woman is that the same is that the same level of crime to you considering the years of trauma and torture that the if black the people if endured? the slaves broke out and they killed like an innocent pregnant white woman who they just happened to find like on the side of the road or mm -hmm. something i would consider those morally equal yes Okay. See, that's that's where I think that's where I think where I don't think that we're going to see eye to eye here because I think that anti whiteness and anti blackness. Yeah, but this I is, think that this the... is no, no, no. This is the issue I have, and this is the consistent problem mm -hmm. that I run into. It's that you think being oppressed means that it's more acceptable for you to do bad things. It's not. No, no it's no, it's no, trauma. It's trauma. No, no, it no. causes trauma, which causes does, people to do certain things. Yeah, trauma, absolutely. trauma. It, it can cause you to do certain things. That's not a justification. There's. It's not a moral difference. It's a. It's a explanatory difference. Even you think that it, but you think that it's okay to do political violence. That you think that what to the bourgeois and your enemies that you think that the other way around would be abhorrent. No, you but, think wait, that that's wait, that's not comparable. We're talking about innocence here. When we're talking about class warfare between the proletariat and the bourgeois, we're talking about targeted political actions in order to achieve a different social state. I'm talking about violence against you, so, innocence. So, here. so, so, you do you think that if so? I think that a lot of the times that what you cover when maybe a quote unquote innocent bourgeois is targeted, you usually point to the fact that they're bourgeois and that that makes it so that they're not really innocent. And then you point to their long list of reasons why they're not necessarily innocent because of their complicitness in the system and the ways that they've wait, used the system to their wait, advantage. Are you, that explore. are you arguing huh? that the moral complicitness in being a member of the bourgeois is the same as the moral complicitness in being born into a white body? And both of those entail the same level of justified retaliatory violence against you based on the damage inflicted by your class of people? A white slave owner, sure. Why, well, if if you're a white slave owner, then sure, I don't care if they gut you, but we're not talking about slave owners. Nobody today, well, most people today, aren't slave owners. R right, right. But like if you're on it, but if you were, we're talking about the Haitian Revolution, right? And you're talking about in that situation, right? There were non-slave owners are there. Huh? There were non-slave owners there. There were innocent families right, right. who were white. Um, right. And we, we, both, we both agree with this. And we both agree that they were innocent and it's bad that they were slaughtered. But at the same time, how were those black people supposed to like magically tell the difference? And also those white slave owners lived, lived, oh, lived fine next to slave owners and didn't do anything about that situation. Well, they could tell right? the difference because they were unarmed and not slave owners, and there were public registries of the reasons people were on Haiti, and there was no reason to believe they'd done anything wrong. And they were also right. killed. When we do revel when we when we start the when we start the slave uprising, we need to make sure to check the registries. Got it. They were, yeah. When you start the slave uprising, you can't just kill random people because of their skin color. Yes. They weren't killed in the heat of action either, by the way. The specific incident that I'm referring to is when orders were given to soldiers. Um, but they, they were actually given to mixed race people who were allied with the, um, the slave revolters and were told to go door to door slaughtering women and children who were light skin as a way of proving their um, allegiance to the black slaves, uh, former slaves who now took over Haiti. So given the circumstances of that violence, I would say, yeah, it was pretty monstrous of them to do that. You can argue like it may have been like a 
like a very cruel way of attempting to secure political power. And maybe there's some like edge case here, given the desperation of a slave revolt type situation. But I don't think that makes what they did like on that level any more morally justifiable. And this is the logic like we why, like why not just have a race war then, right? Like why like why engage in any sociological analysis if we can just write everything off with, well, they're white. And that means they're part of the oppressor class. So like, whatever, you know? No, I, I, it's, it's not that it's not. And I think that a lot of, I, and this is in general, because of this, um, the nuance that's involved with white people being involved in the, uh, um, uh, in general oppression, obviously let's not have a race war. Let's not murder innocent white people. And I don't like when you try to push people into that position, but I do think that in extreme cases, like if you are living in a slave state and you don't necessarily have the tools to uh, differentiate, differentiate, and this is your way of grabbing political power, much like the political power that was grabbed to you, do I think that it's do I think that it's cool? No, absolutely not. But do I go? Do I look at it differently than when the slavers did it to them? Yes, I do. I think that those two things are not comparable. An innocent person is an innocent person, whether or not they're a member of the dominant or submissive power class. Now, exceptions can be made if we're talking about like heat of the moment conflict. Like if there's a slave revolt and the slaves run through like the manner of the slave owner, just killing whoever they find. Like there are obvious, like in the in the conf in in what is effectively warfare. Obviously, we have to make allowances for collateral damage because otherwise, no one could conduct any kind of revolutionary activity. But that doesn't apply right. in the modern world. We're not talking about slaves revolting against slave masters. We're talking about free I mean, black you people and up. free white people like fucking each other here. We're not talking yeah, about the and, heat of and, war. And, and right now, and right now, like I said, and like Endless said, by the way, in that conversation, Endless literally said he has no problem mixing in the mayo. He dates white women. No, he said he, he fucks no white women, but he said he would only have a child with a black woman. I remember that. Right. Yeah, he did. That's a, a preference that he has based upon, and he gave a thousand reasons why. One of those being raising a black kid away from blackness, and the and being of worried about that woman's family and how they would treat his child. Okay, I, I just do, would you would you find these excuses acceptable if they were offered by a white person? Like they were like, I would never have a kid with a black woman. You know, I don't know if culturally we'd get along, and my family members might be racist against any mixed race children we might have. Like. Again, would, would it's not it's compelling? not equivalent. Anti-blackness and anti-whiteness aren't equivalent because of the hierarchy that These exists. If we get rid of white if if we identical. get rid of white supremacy, if we get rid of white supremacy and the world doesn't and the white the hierarchy doesn't exist and there aren't negative like literally studied and defined negative externalities to raising black kids away from black people then yeah like having these having these ideas is is like then goes away but we don't live in a colorblind world we but live in a world that's affected the fact by is the, that would make a mixed race child difficult to raise would be equally the case whether you're a white or a black parent if no because parent, we found we have no because the fact the fact well the factors are the same and actually if a white person says they don't want to have necessarily have a mixed race kid again generally they're tending to hold white supremacist beliefs they believe that they, again this goes into the they don't want degenerate genetics eugenics all of those things that's not what a black person is saying when they say they don't want to have a mixed race kid but there are they're black not. people who literally just don't want their children tainted with less melanin i mean it's a it's a gross way to say it but that's what, I, I mean don't... that's what they say they're pretty open about it if black people got moderated mm -hmm. the same way white people did on twitter then half those fucking accounts would be deleted right now there are no white right. supremacists on twitter as open or brazen about their racist positions as black people can get away with because well because white liberals they hang ring they hand ring over stuff like this you know, it's like, okay, well, if, if, a, if a person is saying, you know, like, I would never want my grandchild to be this skin tone, it's pretty racist, might ban them. Oh, but it's a black person saying it. So like, okay, never mind, I guess. And then we get right, massive because... discourse and interracial, um, like, uh, mm -hmm. children of interracial marriages feel like shit for the next six months. Um, and all the mm -hmm. white people who are racist look at that and think there is a double standard, which to be fair, there is. Black people there get away with more. There is a double standard. Yeah, black people get away with more with stuff like this. But for the yeah, sake of I, progressivism, I, we have to crack down on it. We have to, I, we have to hold them to account. 
No, I, I mean, I, I agree with Martin Luther King on this. To give a man his due sometimes means to give him special uh, uh, special attention, even though that might offend white sensibility. White for material moral sensibility. conditions, not for ideological faults. I'm fine with reparations. I'm not fine with black people but, being racist. But, you're, but the reason why we're not okay with white people and race mixing is literally because they want to erase black people. I don't literally believe, because I don't. they want to do the genocide. Literally because they want no, to they don't. No, find they don't. spaces. They don't. You, you don't. They don't. No, first of what? all, first of all, you're wrong. There are a lot of black people for whom this anti-race mixing thing is just plain old racism. I do not buy this idea that the tens of thousands of black people who get on board with this idea on Twitter are all sociologists who are speaking to some kind of hyper-specific rejection. You don't need to be a sociologist. This is something you sometimes you intuit the things from your environment. It's this just is racism. like cultural. I will be no ch more charitable to them than I would for a white per person who is doing the same thing. If a white person was like, yeah, I don't want to have children with any black people, I'm not going to look at that and go, Ah, well, they're aware of the fact that mixed race children are unlikely to right. feel truly connected right because to but white people and black people grow up in two different environments with two different with both can different be things that affect them. You're just, yeah, this is, both, you're literally both, nobody's just saying both, nobody's white saying both can't more, be racist, but you're saying that the motivations are different. No, the motivations no, come from the this is your this is you being racist. Your explanation for how the two are different is a pre existing assumption that white people are more racist. You're arguing that it's more racist when white people say this identical thing because no, they're more. It's racist from, to begin with no it comes from the idea it comes from the idea of perspective standpoint epistemology they have a white experience and therefore that is it is much 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 more likely like not impossible by the way it's not impossible for a white a white person to have altruistic reasons it's just overwhelmingly disproportionately they tend to be white nationalists which is why we see language like this as red flags the problem is is when we apply the same lens of white nationalists like like looking at things through white supremacy like You're all our textbooks are all of this all of this is a is a set of assumptions you the only uh, what reason am i you assuming think this, because the only reason you think these ideas are different when expressed by black and white people is because you're being more charitable to black people that's it the idea no, is it's like, because of no, 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 no it's because wait, wait, of the wait, wait, experience of the black idea. people and the research and the data behind it yeah no, the, the research and the data okay so racism by definition mm. is making assumptions about a person based on their race um it, it, you know you're literally going like okay well white people are the more racist race Therefore, when mm -hmm. they say the same thing that the black people no, say, you're you're doing you're doing like you're doing race essentialization. You're basically saying that I'm I'm likening this psychological effect to their biology when actually I'm liking it to a social construct that permeates the planet. It doesn't. It's have our to be, it's our response. It's our response to a social construct. Just like I can't go anywhere and escape capitalism. I, I, just like I can't go anywhere and escape capitalism, and it forces people to think in specific ways. I. Yes, white supremacy forces people, like, makes people generally tend to think in specific ways. Okay, let me, and I need, wait, I need, wait, wait, please. I need to roll this back just so you're, just mm -hmm. so you're fully clear where I'm sitting right now, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't think white people are any more racist than black people. I don't think the environment we live in makes white people more racist. I just think that our racism is more actionable and it's in line with systemic racism, which means that it's more likely to manifest in the institutions where it matters. In terms of individual people and their capacity for individual biases, it seems to be pretty much all over the world. You can go to any part of the world and tribal conflicts between different races, ethnicities, mm -hmm. nationalities, everything are pretty omnipresent. Go anywhere yes. and you will find this to be a consistent theme. There is Correct. no place on earth, no, pl no part of this planet where I will look at a person saying, mm, I don't think I'd be willing to have a child with somebody of this race and not assume they're racist. If that, that is the assumption I'm going to make, and if they want to prove me wrong on that, they have to add additional info to contextualize it. So if they want to right. say, I don't want to have a race with X child because there are circumstances economically and around my family that would change things, then maybe I could be more charitable and think, okay, so it's not a racist reason. There are other reasons. But you're <clears> the <throat> one assigning the undue charitability. Because I look <clears throat> at threads of full of black people who are making jokes about melanin, making jokes about how it's crazy how the bloodline has been diluted, people unironically citing Dr. Umar as some kind of uh, patron saint of interracial relations. I'm looking at all that, Dr. and I am, not going to, I am not going to assume Dr. Umar is undistinguishable from a Richard Spencer type. The only difference is that yeah, because he's not absolutely. like funny. Okay, but there are people who like him. Like, yeah. okay, so you know how black people, even fairly moderate black people on Twitter, will say, like, mm -hmm. Dr. Umar moment or put him in memes? How would you feel mm -hmm. if white people had, like, 
Nick Fuentes or Richard Spencer, moderate white people who would pull out memes of one of them looking sassy anytime there was an interracial uh, interaction where a white person um, was being deferential wait, to a black person. Would you wait, feel wait, like, weird I'm, about I'm, that? Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm, con I'm, I'm confused. Let me make sure I'm understanding the situation. Is it like a, because when I generally see the Dr. Umar memes, it's usually us making fun of like, ho like the Hotep black supremacist, like, oh, I'm coming in like a black supremacist right now, or, oh, we're like, you know, it's making fun of uh, a position. Oh, yeah, right. Like when white people, when, when, when um, there's interracial stuff happening or black people are like looting a store and then people will post Richard Spencer with his sunglasses tilted down and they're like making fun of how white supremacists would view wait, the situation. Wait, 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 no, no, no. I'm asking, I'm asking what the setup for the Umar joke is to see if I'm comfortable with the way that it's being used or not. Like, like this is the, this is a, a little bit of a frustration because I'm saying like, if it's a black person that is made, like, again, we use the Dr. Umar meme all the time, but when we do it, we're usually making fun of the fact that one of the things that we're saying sounds very, sounds very close to sounding something racist or oh. even worse or even worse like i was saying it is just something blatantly racist right so, so and we'll like, use that meme as a joke right okay, to identify that behavior it's, it's pepe posting the equivalent would be a white person saying something so, like haha yeah i would never get up with a black guy and then posting, and then like, posting Nick Fuentes or like a clanner or something yeah like david duke like david duke like sitting somewhere so, with a so wait, 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 wait. khakis so, so somebody else after after somebody says that, after somebody says, I never want to get with the black person, and then they somebody responds to that with David Duke or Richard Spencer, you don't think that that's them making fun of the person and calling them a, no, a white supremacist? No, like the initial person would post it. Like there would be oh. like there'd be a video of a store getting looted by oh, black people. Oh, okay. So 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 you're saying like a black person says something racist, then po post Dr. Umar after it. Like they will say a thing that's just racist against white people. And they will post Umar alongside it because they're because they're saying something Umar would say. Right, right, right. You're just talking about like an actual racist and then saying something racist and then posting Umar because like, you know, pro Umar, we all agree. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, that's the I would have a problem with that behavior. I thought you were talking about it, how we tend to use it. No, like, I, I've all seen the time. black like Twitter. Joe Lewis, for example, does this all the time. Black Twitter isn't like hidden. It's not, you don't have to like use a Sherpa to get there. I see how Dr. Umar is used. Overwhelmingly, it seems, by black people who are just saying something racist against white people or something. Usually it's about how black people are betraying their roots by being with white people. So if a black guy mm. is with a white girl and the white girl does something that's like not like polite or sociable, then people will post themselves with like the Kenta cloth hat or whatever. And there will be an Umar meme with 6,000 likes um, which again, like, can you imagine if moderate white people were posting like David Duke in response to an image of like a black girl being rude to a white guy and like the implication being like your ancestors wouldn't approve of you getting cucked out by these black girls, you know, like that's the literal like direct thing that's being said. Do you, do you uh, I I just don't, I'd have to I'd have to actually look at the situation because I just don't think that that's that's just like like I said I think that you're pretty pretty friendly with Joe Lewis and he does it all the time and I yeah, don't it's a problem that I have with him too I I think you I think you people get away with a lot of racism against white people and you justify it because um mm. because like we're the oppressor group or whatever but I don't, I think I, it's, it's bad analysis and it fucks over like chances at actual sociological analysis in the future because you're giving, per, you're giving a pass to bad ideologies. Like, I don't think that we're, I don't think that people are giving a pass to ba bad ideologies. I think that there is a, I don't think that white people, when they come, for example, in the mixed race conversation are coming from it, from a, hey, there's actually like, here's the data on how biracial kids are accepted by white people. They're not, they're actually accepted as black. They generally are seen as black or biracial kids are biracial kids are tend are tend to be uh, biracial kids tend to grow up with adult maladjustment. I don't they think black tend people to not either. identify with blackness, huh? I don't think black people have heard from that direction either. I think black people are engaging in the same. Why, why would why would black people not be approaching it from that angle? Because we're the same.
people. But we're we grow same. up. But we grow up in different environments. We grow now. up in a racially polarized environment that incentivizes right. people to develop tribalistic instincts towards race. But Whether we. But we. But we grow up. But in, but what is the what is the what is the added effect of all of the of all of the rate the colorist hierarchy? What do you think that that does to two different groups of two different people? If you're not like, for example, you're not incentivized to see the way that black people are other. I think that the way that black like biracial children affect black communities and the ways that biracial black kids like are treated is something that's internalized in black culture. It's something that we talk about quite often, but it's not something that's talked about among white people. And there's a reason for that. I don't, I, I guess well, the pro this is the problem I had with you the last time I talked with you too, is the infinite mm -hmm. charitability thing. Um, I don't, I don't what, think you, I'm being charitable. Well, I just, you, I'm just are, saying that. You, no, no, no. You have black people who are doing to your admission, things that are identical to what white supremacists do, except their intentions are different because you assume they're different because they're black. Which is a non-falsifiable mm. argument. There's actually there's no. no way their intentions are different because the intentions are different because of the environments that they grew up in, which are falsifiable and empirically provable. You can empirically prove that black people are treated differently. You can empirically prove that biracial kids are treated like negatively. You can okay. even empirically prove that biracial kids actually have ne the worst well, health I'm outcomes not, than monoracial kids. I'm not denying this at all. Um, because there are problems associated with it in terms of like social outcomes. But first of all, that does not mean that people who are opposed to race mixing necessarily have the best of intentions when they do so. There are plenty of white people, disingenuous white supremacists, who will mm -hmm. bring up um, like the fact that interracial children are less likely to be treated well. And then there are white supremacists who will bring it up fully sincerely. There are white people who do not like black people that much who will fully and intentionally and sincerely say, yeah, I would mm -hmm. never want a mixed race relationship because my children are more likely to have this and that the other. Um, they might think there are genetic reasons why they shouldn't intermarry. There might be reasons mm -hmm. that are purely social, but you are assuming so much about people's intentions when the behavior is identical on both sides. Well, well, that again comes from the environment. And I think that one of the main, the biggest differences, for example, is this is a conversation that is, I, I, the one thing I can empirically prove, I think that you're right about is that I don't have a measure for how much this conversation is happening in the white diaspora. I can say that this is a very, very, very common talking point in the black diaspora, the effect of biracial children and the effect of dating white people. Yeah, this, I think that's a that bit weird to me, by the way, the idea that it well, would be like super, like the, the interracial marriage question would be like a super common topic of discussion. As opposed well, to just love well, we are murdered. We're, we're murdered for it. No, That's why. No, stop. You, you can't with this. Like, obviously, there are different socioeconomic outcomes here, but we can't with this. Like, oh yeah, well, the reason why we're talk, we're like talking about interracial marriage the way like nineteen tens gentlemen would. Is because of like different socioeconomic outcomes for black that, No, that's strange to me because my my great grandmother, who was alive until I was twenty two, told my mother not to marry or, or have children with dark skinned black people because she has to worry about what the effect of their complexion will do. I, it's a very common talking point in black. I, I just don't know. I I just don't know how else to. I, and again, this is I guess the one thing that is not falsifiable. How much are we actually talking about these things? I just don't know why people can't love who they love and marry who they marry. It, it, listen, we all believe this. Like this is that's what I'm saying is I don't think that when when black people are talking about it, they're talking about it from a perspective of like you shouldn't be allowed to love white people. And I don't even think that there's an issue of even dating white people. Well, but I do think that but, there is a historic there's a historic and systemic issue of the negative externalities of what happens when we intermix with with white people. One of those biggest parts being death. That's why historically you'll see, even going back to the 1950s, black people have always approved of interracial marriage at a rate insanely higher than white people and it continues and until it keeps going up and up and up until today until it's a, a damn near 100 percent. and i think it's dragged by white people it's still like in the 80s of percent i think it's like a 12 point difference or something i think that like that right there when you're saying like how like why are when you're saying like white people are more racist or black people are more racist it's not an inherent biological thing but you have to ask yourself why is there such a wide gap 
between what black people find acceptable as far as like, again, interracial marriage and white people? Like, where does that gap come from? Well, right now, there doesn't seem to be that huge of a gap. People is it is it has it has it decreased since I think the last time I checked in it was like twelve. See, yeah, yeah, go down, go down to that group, that uh, chart you're looking at. You see where it says ninety six eighty four. That was the last. No, no, go up, go up one more. Uh, uh, yeah, go up one table. Ninety six eighty four. Ninety six eighty four was the last time I checked in. So now it's ninety six ninety three. Great, we're improving. Yeah, um, uh, you know, hopefully we can continue to improve and not get boggled down in conversations about whether or not it's woke to prevent race mixing or whatever. And we don't think, I don't think that people should, and by the way, there's so many problems with that tweet. I like, I want to go out and say like, to start with, to use a man's family to, uh, to denigrate, to, to, to make this comment, I think is ultimate, is disgusting. It's individualistic and it, it, it does create the, the ridicule situation that you're talking about. If those were pictures of my brother and his mixed kids, I would be very upset about it, but I don't, I just, it just, the racial animus to it isn't the part of it. You know what I'm saying? Well, and I know that you think I'm being charitable, but I'm just saying that's the perspective I that mean, we're coming from. He used the term bloodline. I think racial animus is pretty unavoidable mm -hmm. here. I, I, I will never, mm -hmm. you can't see the word bloodline and think he's talking about, oh, well, the socioeconomic outcomes for the children must have been worse mm -hmm. due to the, like, no, we know what they're talking about. Does he have to see Kyle? Like, what, what will make you think that it's just being motivated by the same petty tribalism that white supremacists are motivated? Well, uh, well, I'd have to see, I'd have to see a change in the uh, way that the black diaspora talks about it. Because again, this is something that's talked about heavily inside of the black diaspora, and the motivating reasons for us not wanting well, what do you to mean race black makes diaspora. Black diaspora is in like um, lot different black people, like with different like perspectives. There's a lot of different, there's a wide range of perspectives inside of like the black community, right? We're not a monolith. So some, there are, and very, very edge cases. And this is, and this is one of the things I agree with you because I try to root them out because I don't like Blitlers either, but there are absolutely black supremacists. That's a thing. They're not most people, but most people talking about this aren't black supremacists. I agree with that, but most white supremacists don't go out and say white people are better. Like 95% of them, overwhelmingly, they'll instead talk about the differences between our people and how we should be kept separate and how there are problems when we intermix and so on. Right, but the, but the problems that they're talking about, like all spawn from degeneracy and culture, the problems we're talking about all come from the way that white people treat the kids. Like I mean, that's what this is about, or the way that like, white people, or the way that white people extract value out of wealthy black people by ha handing them white women, and then that value gets extracted out of a black neighborhood not into white, women, white families. They choose white women, and also the term bloodline suggests that this isn't about any of those things. Um, I, I again, I just don't think that people are as smart talking about it as we are necessarily. Well, but. But this, that's him. He's, he's the guy. You're not, none of us, we're not d fundamentally different. You can't use the term preserve the bloodline and it not be racist. I'm sorry, there's no way around that. Right, but like, if you would want, for example, say you did want black people to exist for the benefit of the black politics in the future, right? And say, like, say that... Yeah, I'm already that, uncharitable well, towards this perspective, um, I think. You know, wait, wait, real, real, real quick on, on that topic. Like, you don't think that, uh, like, trans visibility increases trans political power? You can be as black visible. Visibility? So, wait, that's a disingenuous comparison. I support visibility well, and okay. representation for minorities that exist. However, mm -hmm. I would never support the, prevent the preventing miscegenation so that we preserve, like, like the way mm -hmm. one might a, a specific genome or, a, or an animal kept in a zoo. So we preserve dark-skinned black people for future generations. That's incredibly weird to me. 
Okay, so one of the things I will go ahead and say, because I've made two comments and you can, and, and just so you know that I'm not being disingenuous with you or I'm not trying to backtrack, you can actually look back and see my, my conversation in this tweet and say that one of the things that I actually highlighted, there were two problems with the tweet that I had, one of them being the images being used, the other being the word bloodline. So I'm not really trying to defend the word bloodline, it's patriarchal. And at the end of the day, your agency ends with you. You choosing your child, what your child chooses to love is like the issue right there. And it's incredibly patriarchal. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, but like I was saying, where the where I think a lot of the issue comes from is that like, we can't like, unfortunately, black people can't talk about the very real issues that come from race mixing because of it's such a non-starter conversation, right? Like we can't talk about like, there, there's no not racist way of me, like no matter what I do, I will sound racist when I say raising, um, raising biracial kids or black kids, because again, they're seen as black, away from black, uh, away from black people disproportionately negatively affects them. There's no way for me to not sound racist saying that, right? Well, unfortunately, it's it's backed by the data, but that's it seems to be due to sociological factors, not due to like the inherent mismatch. Right. It has nothing to do with it has nothing to do with biology. It has everything to do with the social constructs we've created. I understand that, but I don't think this is the reason why people make comments about preserving their bloodline. I think you're in inferring that because your experiences with these groups have been largely well-reasoned so when you see black people say stuff like yeah i would never want my children white or i'd never want light-skinned children you think like ah yes it's because they're also concerned with the sociological problems with instead of what they're thinking which is the same zero iq bullshit betty uh bullshit petty tribalism that you hear from white supremacists all the time like it's uh, the average mm -hmm. person is zero iq that's how averages work for iq um the, the majority if you see on twitter a person it, it, like engaging in a, a thought on race, mm -hmm. odds are it's a stupid fucking thought. I'm never gonna like mm -hmm. come across like a broad idea on like a race issue where it's ambiguous and it sounds racist, but if interpreted charitably, it might not be and think like, oh yeah, that's definitely not racist. Like there's no reason to do that. My experiences right. online have taught me it's almost always better to assume it's stupid unless given reason to believe otherwise. Right, and that's because I, I'm, I'm just, that that that's again because of the I, I think us being cut by white supremacy. I think that we've dealt with so many white supremacists. It has it is very reasonably created these red flags in us that make us go, oh my god, that there's something wrong here. But again, the when I like for example, to even use endless as an example, I like endless has expressed literally everything that I've described at this point, right? He's literally, I think in that conversation with Shark, not only did he say that he would, he said he wouldn't have a white, uh, a white baby or a biracial baby, didn't have, not have a baby with a white person, but he literally described why. He and said he wanted to have control over the races of his forebear or his, um, his progeny as well, beyond his own children. He was arguing about the preservation of his skin tone and that the world wouldn't have a place for him if dark-skinned black people didn't mm. exist in the future because mm. they'd all interracially married or whatever. Right. I, so so remember when I said we can't talk about this and not sound racist? The part where we're saying like, hey, the existence of dark-skinned black people lowers the political power of black people as a whole, and it's something that's happened historically and we can point to this. That's literally what he's talking about there. No, he's just racist. It's just, it's just, no, it's just racism. It's, that's, it's that simple. It's, he's literally like, he said, there's an international conspiracy to get rid of the black race through interracial marriage with white people. And now he wants to control his bloodline to make sure that it stays black. It is point for point identical in every sense to the uh, great replacement conspiracy theory, except for black people. So when you ask him about these things, which I've asked him directly about these things, and I've said, hey, what did you mean there's an international conspiracy? Do you think that white people are just trying to, uh, that all white people are trying to be racist? He goes, no, I'm pointing to the historical examples of when we've been bred for lighter skin or when we've been used, like this is where Today these in America, are. no black people are being bred for lighter skin. There's no cabal trying to convince black people to sleep with white people so that we produce mixed race <clears throat> children. 
There's right. Just, there's, it's not. It's not happening. People are free right. But today in America, like no earlier than the '90s, we've had institutions that selected for light skin and that light and the fact that they selected for light skin was a way to get those light skin people both to tokenize themselves and not give the political power to the black people in those institutions yeah, like you're it, describing systemic racism not a conspiracy to get people to engage in interracial marriage that's different right i, I acknowledge the racist yeah. systems not the forced mm -hmm. miscegenation systems there's no such I, conspiracy I, I think that I think that I can concede that maybe rhetorically that's a little that maybe he didn't do so well right there. No, and I think and no, I think that it, he no, talked no, about no. this with deep. It wasn't his rhetoric. It was the idea he expressed. It's not an optics thing. He just said that and defended it over the course of the whole conversation. It's the thing he believes. He he. I don't think that he believes that individually that there are. I believe that he thinks that there are some white people that believe this, but I don't think that he. As a matter of fact, he pointed out this is how hegemonic systems work. They don't actually work with intent, individual intent. I don't think there's any push. The push has always been against miscegenation. There, are, the the racist social pressures in this country have been about keeping white, black, and everyone else separate. Um, the idea, right, but, that, but, but light skinned black people enjoy because of the colorist because of colorism certain benefits even though they will never be white they do get because of their distance to whiteness there are some benefits to that no well then maybe we should have more mixed race children so more of them can get the benefits of proximate whiteness it's it, it, it in it in the in the end, it all forms tokenism anyway, so it's like it's pretty irrelevant. But it does diminish. It does diminish political power. Like that's it, just. I the don't point think that it I'm diminishes trying. political power for white and black people to have children with each other. If anything, I think uh, it increases political power because greater integration between the races uh, means everyone has literal skin in the game and increases the likelihood that we're willing to build uh, institutions that will benefit all of us. The more we're kept se uh, separate, the more I win. Because white skin oh. people, like, I'm oh, sorry, white skin, I was just saying light skin, white people um, have a much easier time building systems around racism as long as black people are kept in their own separate communities with their own separate skin color and there's no blurring I, and no I, I don't think so that Endless wants people to be in separate communities. Uh, I don't think anybody said that they want people to be in separate communities. I mean, he was opposed to miscegenation, and that's literally what happens when people share communities. I, I Again, he is okay with dating white women just not having a baby with That's them because of the... okay so so you think that dating a white woman but choosing not to have a child for the reasons that he's described is going to lead to black supremacists like 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 black people trying to separate themselves like him taking his white girlfriend and trying to separate themselves into no, like wait, their own neighborhood you think wait you think there's no relationship between the idea of black people should only have children with other black people and black people should stay with other black people those ideas i don't are think right that he i don't think that he's ever said that black people should only have children with other black people he's he was defending uh he was uh, he was uh, attacking miscegenation he was defending the idea of black people I, choosing. i, I think he actually i think he people. actually openly said in his thing that he had no problem with biracial children or people Inter intermixing so Everyone you would have to then assume, that, you would have you no, i understand you would have to assume you would have to assume that he that he's really just lying about those points which i guess this is this is but where he we're also getting argue at. that he wants his skin tone to continue to exist in the future which would mean that he right. wants a broader control over people's um patterns of race mixing i mean saying that you want black people to exist in the future i don't think is a is a weird statement it's given this weird in the context of the conversation yeah because we're not talking about black people being eliminated by war or disease or poverty we're talking about in his context black people being eliminated giant finger quotes by loving and choosing to spend time with and building families with white people and in that context i really don't care if there are black or white or any groups of people in the future our racial categories of our temporal. So, anyway. so, but, but all that, all that it requires from all it requires for black people to exist in the future is that he chooses, like it doesn't require all black people. It just requires that he chooses to. No, you don't make statements baby. like the future must be safe for black people when only referring to who you personally want to have children with. Again, if you listen to like a white nationalist talk and they say like, we must. So for example, the 14 words, 
we must secure right. a future for white people, white children, you know, whatever. Like, they're not mm -hmm. saying my child, you know, this is the 14 words right here. We must secure a future for our people. That's the logic right there. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you, they can hand wave with like, you know, oh, I just mean like my kid. Oh, I personally would only do this. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with other people. But like, I don't really think he believes that because I've seen dog mm -hmm. whistling like this from white people. And I just don't know why I should be more charitable when a black person is tripping over red flags on their way to justify not because you be, yeah people. because you're because you think that anti-blackness and anti-whiteness come from the same place and i just don't and i and it's and it's very and i and i think that this is a th this is a where i think that i just think i don't i'm hearing now that i don't think that i'm going to get this that idea past you because i happen to know endless and i've n never seen endless even begin to suggest anything like along not only along those lines but i have a white girlfriend and my brother has mixed race kids and he calls them pretty you know what you re this would be like you being get, friends with Richard Spencer and you're like, he can't be racist. I have a black cousin and he was like, oh, what a nice cousin. You're doing no, the same. Of course no, you no, 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 you no, 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 He's trying, like, the, but you wouldn't and this is what I, it. the problem that, that I have is that you're so infinitely mm. charitable that any obviously racist thing a black person says is actually like, you'll attribute all of it to sociological analysis. And even if it mm. isn't attributable to sociological analysis, you'll just say, oh, well, it's different than the exact same belief when held by white people for white people, because white people and black people, their respective racisms are different. Like you would never recognize the red flags because you've convinced yourself that they're all like fine. Like you, you've blinded yourself. Except, to except that I do I, like I, there is literally again and again, I, I'd have to see if the VOD's still up on my channel, but I've actually pointed to black supremacists that do have dangerous beliefs that I do like have issues with. There's one in my there's one in my area. His name is Amp Trip. He tends to go on black supremacist rhetoric. And I he absolutely and I I absolutely do point out all the things that point to the red flags of it. I just think that you have an issue with the fact that I am not equating anti-blackness and anti-whiteness, which is I think where we're just coming to a head here. Um another I, one of the I just want to be clear of, by the way, at the end mm -hmm. of the day, you guys are the victims of all of this, right? Historically, whenever you have this type of ideology take forefront, like Garvey, for example, with black separatism, pan-African fascism, anti-miscegenation, he worked with the Klan, and then he ended up setting back black rights, you know? Every right. time every time there's this popular sentiment of, oh, well, white people are so shit, we better strike it out on our own, you know, we should, which, by the way, anti-miscegenation is a component of, for sure, because the idea that we shouldn't even be having interracial children is a denial of the... Um, the, the racial intermixing that our country is, you know, ideally, I think. Again, you have to of. make the jump that we're saying we don't, we shouldn't be having, like, do you think I believe that we shouldn't be having interracial children? But no, I, I think you'll play the defense for the people who will say that, though. I don't right, think right, you right. But, that. but, but you don't think that I believe that, right? So, but I've exposed, exposed, like, literally the same, like, literally the same talking point. So yeah, why am I, I different? Because I've talked to you, and I... First of all, from our first conversation, I know that you're incredibly fucking charitable to people of color, which I love and forgive you for. And second of all, um, because I know you and I know you're reasonable. Everything that I saw in that conversation with Endless was just like him tripping over like gallon carts of red flags, like repeated, like word for word, white supremacist propaganda, just with the characters mm -hmm. and nouns switched. I think you're charitable towards those ideas. But I don't think I don't think you 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 like personally believe them. I don't think you're a racist, or I don't I don't have like I don't have an issue with you at all. I do like you, talking. Do you think to you. I'm a, it's just do do you think I'm as charitable with white people with that? No, I don't think you would ever be as charitable to a white person. Right, right, right. Why why did why did, why do you think that I have such charitability towards black people and not towards white people? Um, I think for the same reason that a lot of people in my community have more charitability for women. Uh, the same reason that a lot of people in the left have more charitability towards um, trans people. I think that a lot of people just see um, social disprivilege as a as a, an inherent justifier for bad behavior. We see a lot of this, like, this is like a pretty ubiquitous belief, by the way. When mm -hmm. women do something sociopathic, people line up to clap and say, girl boss. Uh, when guys do something sociopathic, it's, it's much fair. less like, yeah, so this is a broader trend and everyone engages in this behavior, including myself. I am absolutely more charitable when it comes to women doing bad stuff than men doing bad stuff for a couple of reasons, all of which are sexist. Um, 
the the issue that I have is that it, I, I feel like this attitude, it's like a two sides of the same coin thing. Because whenever <clears> black people are like, yeah, dude, I would never intermix. Haha, <laughs> Dr. Umar, we got to keep to our own people. Yeehaw. And then I'm thinking like, I just don't think they talk about it like that. Well, they don't say yeehaw. But white supremacists are looking at that and cackling because they're like, it's it's perfect for them. It's really, really, really difficult to do racial segregationism when black people are marrying all of our fucking white women. Um, but when, mm -hmm. when, when they're, you know, in their own communities, engaging in their own weird anti-miscegenation protocols, it becomes mm -hmm. way easier to socially draw lines. Look at how much harder it's been to do racism systemically since the uh, 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 um, Civil Rights Act was passed. Our communities are still redlined and black people still get mega shafted. But the ways in which we've been able to target them sociologically for adjacent issues like the economy, so, it's gotten so harder. I think I think the issue here, I think the issue here, Ivaj, and is that we do agree with literally all of those points. I don't think black people are doing those things. I don't think black people are trying to put a situation in which case, like, it becomes harder to date other black um, white women. This is why I go to the, this is why I go to historically, if you look at, like, the ways that mix the amount of hate or the ways that mixed race couples are harassed, it's disproportionately from white people, even though black people hold these, uh, hold these beliefs. And I think that that tends to be evidence of like, the, the, like, like endless isn't sitting endless or none of these people are sitting here saying that, you know, maybe we shouldn't do interracial marriage, but I will find white supremacists that say that, right? Like, and this is where I'm like, in the point that you were making earlier, where you're like, this starts, um, this goes down a path of like the pan-African fascist mis uh, misogyny. And I'm like, well, like that'll work with the clan. And I'm like, I don't think endless would ever work with the clan. I, I could be, have the most incredible, I could have the most incredible um, mischaracterization of him, but he seems to pretty much openly state like anybody working with Nazis or the Klan is like, that's just the like he, he hates people that bring them onto their platforms. So it's strange to me that we would attribute the ideas that he would like, he's going to fall down that path because he simply believes of believes in the sociological effects that you even validate are actual real phenomenon. I don't think he, per well, I don't know if he personally believes that. I don't think he personally believes that. I'm just saying that it leads to ideological trends that I disagree with. I want interracial marriage um, to, to be as, as normal as non-interracial marriage. I see the only- It should be. The only road forward in this country, as far as I'm concerned, for racial integration is real integration on the fucking genetic level. I want that for everyone. It's not just a white and black thing. Um, the, the, uh, well, I, generally, generally, I think that the problem, though, is that, like, Hmm. But I want I people to make that, that choice it, freely. I don't want it to, like, I don't want it to be weird or whatever. Like, I just want people to be able to, like, just on their own, like, right, right. without these pressures. And let's face it, there are a lot of fucking white people. There are a lot, and I talk about this plenty, so this isn't like a, a selective thing. There are plenty of fucking white suburban dads who would put a, a gun in their mouth if they found out that their daughter was dating, like, a, a, a black guy in high school or whatever. Oh, um, I know. I've had a white suburban dad aim a shotgun at me for Yeah, it. so there you go. That guy, specifically. Mm -hmm. um, except he was I, aiming at you instead of inside this, this is This is the point that I'm trying to make. That that exists from white culture. I genuinely don't see that coming from black culture. And the reason why, the only reason why happens to be the environments that they're brought up in. Like that's what I'm talking about is is when we're talking about attitudes towards biracial uh, biracial people. I don't see black guys putting guns in their mouths because their their son dated a white woman. In general, a lot of the times it's celebrated and laughed about, even though the the dad might ha say something racist every now and then. So, and I'm I, not I don't, saying that it's okay. I, I'm not. Go ahead. I just want to say Sorry. I think white people do it the worst. I don't think they're the only ones. Actually, I don't know if that's true. I think Asian families do it the worst. Our Asian families are insane about the whole, like, yeah, marry within your own people type thing. So this is a broad I, issue. I, but just speaking I, about I, white I, and black people. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think if you look at the violence, I, I think we can measure that in violence, right? Well, white people are, are the best at violence. That's why we conquered the world, right? And I'm just talking so, so in terms it, of the predominance of the values. So you don't think that, you don't think that like the fact that it exists, like that white people do the, like, like, are you just saying like white people, like are, do white people just get a pass because they do the violence the best? No, I'm not saying we get a pass. I'm not, I, but isn't no that indicative of more extreme, people. but isn't that more indicative of extremist beliefs then?
Well, I, I clearly if think you're willing that, to do violence over something. I clearly think that white people being racist is like the biggest race based problem in America. That's like 99% of the stuff I talk mm -hmm. about on stream. This is this is why these conversations always feel a bit meandering for me. It's because like I this is this is not a problem that affects me. Right. I'm not a mixed race child. Uh, if I had mm -hmm. a mixed race child, they would probably be raised in a largely gamer environment, which, as we know, is totally racial. Um, I don't have to worry about socioeconomic issues. Um, I don't have to worry about any of this shit. If black people decide to go like build a dinghy and go f float back to Africa to build a pan-African ethno state, God's why do you keep it, thinking wait, that everybody is trying joke. to do it's, build it's an a ethno joke. state? Wait, it's, a, it's a joke. I make lots of jokes okay. about white people too. I okay. promise. But I'm just saying, whatever they do, it doesn't affect me. The only thing they can really do is fuck themselves over, frankly, because again, dominant power groups. The problem here is that I just have issues with the ideology because I think it reinforces itself, right? Like, I think that white racists get stronger when black racists are comfortable being black racists. Because I, I think that while liberal colorblindness might not exist, the ideal of liberal colorblindness is something we should point to in a distance. Well, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Sorry, wait. The The idea of liberal colorblindness hasn't been achieved. It should be something we can point at in the distance. And if it looks like the left is siding with black people who are pretty, like, kind of openly anti-white, it makes us look really bad. And it gives white people way more credit to their racist beliefs because they can go, look, it's just tribalism, baby. We all do it. So I, I try to oppose this on a broader level, detached from the actual harm done by the idea, because when it comes to the harm done, of course white people are going to be on top. We rule this place. Of course we're going to be the worst at it. But the ideology can still be criticized in an a-racial sense because it seems to be present in pretty much every racial group in this country, even though it's expressed in different ways, the baseline ideas, the tribalism, the conspiracism, the desire to see the bloodline of your family maintained in a racial sense. This stuff! That is universal, um, truly universal. It, it transcends race, creed, nationality, time. Um, it, that's what I want to criticize here. And I just don't like it when we're selective about who we criticize for it. Well, I don't think that uh, the reason why this, this goes back to the give is managed, uh, managed to, I think because of the hierarchical differences, what happens, and I'm not talking about the harm done, but I'm talking about like, I think that because black people don't want to erase white people and they generally are just talking about the uh, environment and think like they're internalizing way ways that they're being treated in their community and their motivators don't again i don't see interracial couples like exiled from from black culture right the same way that i see them exiled from white culture i just see that black people talk about the negative effects of race mixing and I think that those negative effects are real. And I think that it's hard to talk about. Um, there was another point that I wanted to, to kind of bring up because I think this kind of goes into, you, you kind of brought up, I think in that Anne Frank video, like you, you said that, um, and by the way, it, did you not, did you want me to stay on this? Did you want, I, I just don't think we're gonna see eye to eye. No, it's fine. So. I just, I just want to point out, I do, I do think there are mixed race black people who are plenty ostracized in the black community. I agree that, yes, it's, they that are. It's, it's generally done worse by white people because everything is multiplied by our, our, our social power. Um, right, right. But, 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 the the but the difference, I think the difference is, is that mixed race black people are absolutely ostracized by dark skinned black people. I told you dark skinned, light skinned wars, but light skinned, but mixed race and light skinned black people also ostracized black people. And both of those things are a response to white supremacy. Right. Neither of us have hierarchical power. So generally, this is just us like edge. None of it's good, by the way. This is but not me I'm justifying. I'm, it. Yeah, I'm just saying no. that the broader tendencies are bad here. I'm not I'm not saying that black people do it worse than white people. We do everything worse than you guys um, because, you know, social power and stuff. But I don't think black people are gen like like basically what, what I'm saying is I don't think that black people treat biracial people like they're abominations. I. We're still making an argument of severity rather than ideology here, but I still I do think that I do think that happens to an extent. I think a lot of it is more the idea of being a race traitor because mixed race people um, will benefit in some ways from cultural upbringing that's affected by the white parent that they have, which usually means access to more money. It means that they don't grow up only listening to AAVE usually, which means that they tend to be either less quick on the code switch or they're more likely to talk more like a white person. And then when they talk with like, I don't know, full-blooded black people or dark-skinned black people or whatever um these are treated as signs of like um like a kind of like a like a kind of soft uh race mm -hmm. traitorism um that, or, or tra treachery that they that they like, make fun of them for 
I don't think that's what the, what they're actually intuiting. I think that what they're actually doing is because I've done this as a and I've done this as a dark skinned black person. Um, growing up in a, as the fly in the milk experience, like growing up as the one black person in, in a majority white area, you tokenize yourself, and then that tokenization that you do towards other people tends to be what draws ire to those other people. The idea that like white culture others us, so if you bring that othering like as a black person to other black people, that's why they get that. That's where a lot of the ostracization comes from. Not that that's saying that like. Well, not it's not because you're not talking black enough, because I think that if that were the case, then Jamaican or Caribbean black people or African black people would get the same level of ire as light skinned black people. Instead, okay. it's the distance to it's the distance to uh, black culture and the ways that white people tend to other black people that they bring with what from white culture that tends to be the reasons why light skinned people are targeted. No, wait, that's bullshit. You can't say the 10 year old light-skinned black kids are targeted because they internalize the white cultural elements that then make them a tar like th that's like victim blaming it's like if a if what a, do you mean well if a mixed race kid adopts elements of white culture because of their white parent and proximity to white culture Ooh. like that doesn't justify Ooh. Wait, wait, again, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's a justification. Anytime you challenge a black person's blackness, like I don't care how light you are, you're still black. And anytime you you attack that person's identity, their blackness, like it's wrong. It's wrong when black people do it. Like it's wrong when anybody does it. There are many black people creators. I, I can see like literally the seething anger. But that's my matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why when you um, study biracial people and you see if they identify with their blackness, they tend there's a lot of anger and animosity towards black people. And I that's where it comes from, having their blackness challenged all the time. And that's incredibly problematic, right? That doesn't mean that it doesn't that doesn't also mean that a lot of the things that black people are responding to aren't the tokenization and the othering that light skinned people bring un unknowingly, by the way, they have, they haven't like a 10 year old has no idea that their way that their white French street black people is offensive to most black people. That's, that'd be an uncrazy burden to put on them. That's why we're not saying any of this is okay. I'm just simply describing the phenomenon. It's not because they're not switching from I, AAVE. <laughs> Okay. Right. It's not I, because they're not well, code no, switching. Wait, right? Mixed mixed race black people get talked down to a lot for acting white. Um right. by black people. Like depending on right. the way they talk or the stuff they're interested in. There's there's absolutely a bias. Like the, the idea oh. of the, the like subtle race dark, treachery. Dark skin dark skinned black people get those same things though. Yeah, I'm not denying that though. I'm only saying that mixed race people do absolutely get shit from darker skinned black people and that there are a lot of light skin jokes in the um no, and there are a lot of dark skin jokes. Okay, I I know that. I'm not denying the existence of that or of colorism broadly. I'm only but, saying but what that... you but what you're trying to say, and this is where the in the vertexes get get muddied, right? You're trying to say that there are certain behaviors that they engage in that they're called white for, but it has nothing to do with the fact that they're light skinned, but instead just the behaviors that they're engaging in. Because if a dark skinned black person engages in those behaviors, they too get ostracized in the same way. Well, but what? when you're talking about light skin jokes, yeah, light skin, dark skin jokes both exist. If you're talking specifically about that, you can't bring the code switching stuff in, though, you know? But they but that's that's true. It's not like you can't if 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 a person is mixed race and they're getting shit mm -hmm. for acting white because they've picked up white behaviors from the white parent they have, attacking right. them for the acting white is functionally an attack on them being mixed race. Um, no, because you because if I go into white culture, adopt white behaviors and come back into black culture, I am ostracized for those same behaviors. Am I now being ostracized for being biracial, even though both my parents are black? What about Katarana? She's middle class black. She talks about having these issues, even though she has black parents. Right. Because of the distance to be because we've picked up things from white culture. It's those behaviors. It's not their existence as a biracial person. Yeah, but that's like saying that's like being racist against a person because of their accent. And then you find out that they're not actually born in the place you're racist against. They just moved there, got the accent then moved back over like you're really racist against albanians but they actually just moved to albania picked up the accent then but they're actually from like france or something like it's it's indicative like there are associations here obviously mixed race pe children are going to be more likely to represent elements of white culture because they have by definition one white parent 
um, or whitish parent, you know, it varies, but they, they, they're they likely to have been directly exposed to white people in white culture um, to the extent that it exists early on. So there is like an implicit anti-mixed race. Like, you, how can you say that like making fun of black people for doing white things isn't an attack on mixed race children? It has to be. That's a necessary wait, wait, consequence. But, but because, because there are plenty of black people that grow up outside of black culture that have the same issues. Plenty. Matter of fact, most middle class black people, because of the way that poverty works and the disproportionate rate that black people are in poverty, usually the higher level of success in, increases the likelihood that you're going to be in an increasingly white environment. Those people are treated the same way, like with their ostracized, but they're not mixed race. But that doesn't mean if, if you are if you make fun of a set of characteristics that are overwhelmingly associated with being mixed race, even if other groups can have it as well, being why are they overly associated with being mixed race and not overly associated with just being white? Because we're talking about colorism here, not racism. So, so this is this black is where people, I'm... black people making fun of white people for being white is different from making fun of mixed race people for being white. Because mixed but, race people have the whole issue with them feeling like they're stretched between two different identities. White people don't have that. For white people, being made fun of for being white by a black person is generally amusing, and it means that we get to say the n-word in our head at least once. It's like the right. The you're saying that it affects. You're saying that it affects the mixed race person differently, and I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but at least that's different than saying that that like making fun of somebody for having white behaviors is an attack simply on the existence of mixed race people. Well, we shouldn't make fun of anybody for exhibiting white behaviors, right? Obviously, I would be against anyone who is white making fun of black people for exhibiting black characteristics. If there was a person who was mixed race or white who talked in like, uh, I don't know, like set an AAVE term or something, and people were like, oh, you're black. like. Obviously, we would recognize that's bad to do, so we probably shouldn't do the reverse of that to mixed race kids, right? Right. I, again, I think this kind of comes into the idea of what is blackness and what is whiteness in the first place. But obviously, making fun, it's not just mixed race kids you shouldn't do that to. You shouldn't do that to all people that exhibit those behaviors well, I agree. that aren't indicative of their, of their culture. But it doesn't mean that it's endemic to just mixed race kids. That's okay, all I'm saying. I, well, I like, agree we, okay, well, I agree we shouldn't do it. Yeah, and, and, and for, that's my point originally, that challenging any black person's blackness is bad. And those mixed race kids are black, so it's bad. And um, challenging my blackness is bad. I agree. I, well, that's, that's, that's true. I really shouldn't challenge your blackness. I know that you've been out there and I know this is an issue that you struggle with identity wise, right? Like you're at, you're at home and you're like, I just want to listen to more Tupac, but I can't because if I do in front of my mom, she'll call me too listen, black. I've got the complexion of a white man and the vernacular of a black man. Um, oh, you, you definitely, you definitely sound exactly like the stereotypical black man in America. You <laughs> I it just, in, just like I do, by, just like I do, by the way. I definitely sound like a black guy. Yeah. Um, Do you, um, you said you wanted to talk about Anne Frank, by the way? Yeah, it, it was just something specific that you kind of said. And I think this kind of comes into sometimes the totality, the totality of like invisible versus uh, visible identifiers. You, you went and you said something. And, and again, if I, I, I invite you to clear it up and maybe there's a misunderstanding here. But you said when a white person goes to India, are they getting white privilege or are they really just getting American privilege? Right. I, did I say that? Um, I think yes. I, I think I think I would qualify that statement, but I think there's a broader trend there. That's true. You don't think that the in, first of all, that's the the country literally founded on colorism. Um, from yeah, we did Gandhi, a lot of work there. Least from Gandhi that does that like like they have an, they have a legalized caste system right now where they actually do discriminate against dark skinned Indian people and they generally discriminate against black people. Um I think, don't did think... I did I say China or India? Because I feel like You said this, India. Okay. I feel like this statement would be more applicable to China. However, the broader <laughs> the broader statement here, which is that um white supremacy, while global, is still very contextualized in the nation that you're in. 
and that Correct. it takes different forms depending on what country you're in. And that I do think past mm -hmm. a point, it's the fact that you're American will probably give you more of a buffer than being white. For example, like if you went to um, if you went to Nigeria or, uh, or or a good part of South Africa or whatever, I don't think being white would help you very much at all. Actually, I think it might be a bit of a social detriment. You know, you might get in a, you might you, you, you might you might uh, attract a bit of negative attention. However, being an American would be pivotal there because it would give you um, in addition to distancing from the local racial conflicts. Um, it would also give you, you know, the power and prestige and wealth associated with being a, a tourist. Um, to, so, to so this is this is where we we like very much wholly disagree because I don't think that the people that are discriminating against a, a white person in Nigeria are discriminate are care whether he's from America, England, or Germany. Matter of fact, because that's an invisible identifier, I doubt that they make the distinction. They just see that they're white and they assume power, wealth, and privilege. That's pretty racist not, of them. Um, not Amer yeah i mean i mean it's hey I, i'm not saying i i didn't ask for the world to be the way that it is but it is you know and i just i, I think I, i'm just saying i'm guessing here but i do feel like if you were in like south africa or something like it would be better to be an american white guy in a lot of that country than to be a south african white guy in a lot of that country i could be wrong but from what i've heard that's the impression that I've been given, especially well, since... Well, no, 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 no. When you say American, what about Eng the difference between American and England and German? Like, you mean non-South African white, not just American? Um, to an extent, I don't know if I would extend that, that recognition to the Dutch, say, but... When I, when I say American, I guess I broadly mean Westerner, but I think that would depend on the country. Okay, okay, maybe that's maybe that's the diff maybe that's the the distinction there. Maybe maybe we can we can um, come to an understanding there because I don't think that these people are like that's such an invisible identifier. Whether you're, I mean, I understand accents can kind of give that away, but I mean, uh, I think generally, I I don't think that the English and the Americans are treated differently. In, in these places and just the same they way as like they might in india right in india there might be there there might be an india difference i don't know i'm guessing at that but like that was pretty well, recent you know and america what are, you, what are you talking about well because you know it was it was the english who fucked over india and they only got out of there like you know mm -hmm. the 40s. Kind, well kind, kind of kind of kind of kind of not right um I, I actually spoke with an indian anarchist the other day and um and i i do get myself um South Asian politics from him. It's a misnomer that uh, I, I don't think that maybe this is what you mean, but it's often a misnomer that a lot of the caste system that um, is exist in India today came from British colonial rule. It actually predates that. Matter of fact, they're Aryan nationalist over there. They're like they're literally like the OG <laughs> Aryans over there, like pushing uh, Aryan Brahmin pushing like racial superiority and that and not respect them. They've been there for like thousands of years. Um, yeah, it's um, it's, they, it's they're, not they're, good. Listen, their I, caste system is crazy. They have like a million different vertexes in a million different ways. So uh, any way that we talk about it is like way oversimplifying. Yeah, I'll stick to my American racism. I just, I don't know. I feel like if I visited, if I visited India, I think I'd be treated a bit differently if I showed up in like a Hawaiian shirt with an American flag pattern and like uh, cargo shorts and weighing 450 pounds and with sunglasses and a fanny pack. Than if I showed mm -hmm. up looking like a member of the fucking Raj with a with a mustache and a pointed hat or something, you know, or that yeah. that safari hat with a <laughs> buckle on the front. I feel, I just I feel like because because our skin color would be the same, you know. And I just well, I just think I think that people I think that the reason there is I think people are they assume you're there for two different reasons, right? I think that if you show up anywhere with that outfit, people will pretty much go, "Oh God, we've seen this before. We know why he's here." Oh, you'll be lynched on the street, like two thirds of the planet, if you show up in this outfit, and like the, they'll like half the people who see you will get non flashbacks, and you'll be lynched right after. Yeah. But but the reason why the American privilege is hard to like hold up though is because I don't get it right, and I'm American, right? So that's why it becomes a weird. It gets weirdly drawn on the racial lines, right? Because black people don't get to get American privilege but we live in America and some of us are even wealthy. Matter of fact, I, even wealthy black people, whoa, if you think wealthy black people are treated badly here, boy, you should see how they're treated in other countries. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I think that's true. There are probably some countries where there would be a broader recognition of like um, multiracial American identity, but I'm trying to think because like, if you go to, Ch if you're black and you go to China, 
they'll like throw rocks with the n-word scratched onto it at your head um, oh not Japan, not really no nah, they will they'll drop anvils from from the, my, the top of their high rises with the n-word you, you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna like this my uncle actually lives in Xinjiang, the Xinjiang province he actually has an asian wife and and little and he's a jehovah's witness which by the way let me go ahead and tell anybody that any of these stupid ass like tanky channel loving fascists out there there is absolutely a genetic a genocide going on the jehovah witnesses over there have been keeping track of the families that have been disappeared please stop with the misinformation oh i thought you were going to say that your your jehovah's witness family member was over there like black bagging guys with beards to uh throw oh no 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 he, he he lives there he doesn't get he doesn't get it he doesn't get it that bad what they do is they have a different kind of response to it they're fascinated with like they cannot leave him alone it's only now that he's been there i think his his oldest daughter is like what seven now so he's been there for like seven ish like uh, seven ish to ten ish years i i don't know the exact amount and it's only now that in the the area that he lives that people stopped being fascinated with him you know what i mean yeah, they, I, yeah I, they, I saw that i saw that in japan too when I visited, I saw a couple other Americans there. I mean, it's a tourist city, Tokyo, but there was yeah. this one black guy who I saw because we were part of the same tour group that was going through one of the Shinto uh, temples in the downtown area. And um, they call him Michael Jordan. <laughs> no, they they just fucking <laughs> stared at him. They just were walking by. He was a tall guy too, you know. The Japanese aren't exactly huge, and he was big. I mean, big, you know, bigger than me. And uh, he was he was just getting just gawked at, you know. I don't know if they were thinking like, oh wow, it, it turns out they don't have one single lip that just forms an O ring around their mouth, um, or 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 what? Because they'd only ever seen black people before in the hentai's and the mm -hmm. animes and shit. But like, crazy um yeah but but generally let's just let's just note that colorism exists definitely in these asian countries as well so that's not saying that black, like ex even dark-skinned asian people get shit on in most of these countries oh, especially for sure. south, south super, korea is yeah. insane japan's super racist i think it I, I think it varies a lot in um ah fuck i'm trying to think because the the countries that are most likely to have reflexively bad attitudes towards white people are going to be countries that decolonized recently and don't have many of them. There are a lot of African countries that are probably actually more dangerous as a white tourist than as a black tourist, just because you stand out more and people with with uh, negative sympathies. You know, like I don't know, Rwanda or some shit. You know, you get some um, get a couple of stares. Um, it, for the most it, part, though. It's weird though because you see in a lot of those countries still an obsession with skin lightening. Like there's a there's a there is a market marked um obsession with skin lightening that you would assume because like Asia, you would get it in Asia like in Korea and stuff because they're already so close to white that like that kind of makes sense. But actually it still exists in like Africa which is crazy. But no, they, like they yeah, banned it's it like recently one of the most in Nigeria, right? They recently um Oh, actually, wait, there was some racist misreporting here. So I think it was mm -hmm. Nigeria, but apparently um, for, for, for a Nigerian, um, uh, 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 no, they didn't ban skin lightning, but for Nigerian like advertisements and radio and shit, uh, they, they would hire a bunch of foreigners to do work for their commercials, like British people and stuff. And they banned non-Nigerian models recently, but the New York Times reported it as them banning white models, which was wrong. That was racism from the New York Times. Oh, Rwanda. Mm. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Rwanda banned skin whitening, which makes sense given their history. Um, Nigeria yeah. banned the advertising thing, but I don't have a problem with banning non-Nigerian models if you're outside the, um, the, the imperial core, you know? Banning the white models I would have taken issue with because there are white people in Nigeria, but then but New York Times misreported on it, which was super fucked up, yeah. I mean, technically, we should have a problem with banning Nigerian models, too, in general. But I agree that it's extra egregious when it's based on on color. Like we we I, I think we have the same sensibilities here. No, I mean, like, like, I'm OK with them banning, like, all the foreigners from their local modeling markets or stuff. Oh, is that what it was? I thought it was like I thought it was OK. Banning all the foreigners. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's cause, cool. cause I thought kept... it was something specific to Nigerians. Like, let's all ban if you have a Nigerian, you know. Like no, ID no, they were hiring. Hands. It was like it's like four out of five models that were hired in Nigeria over the past decade have been like English or German or something, and they were done all like outsource shit. And like Nigeria does not have that many white people, you know. So they're all mm -hmm. they're doing like these these companies that of course have like transnational ties, you know, that work closely with Western businesses. Um, you know, it's like, okay, well, how do we sell these beauty products to black people? Well, let's put them on people who can't stand outside for 10 minutes without getting a sunburn. 
Um, and it was causing like cultural issues because it's like, well, fuck, you know, if you're outside the Imperial core, I have very different attitudes when it comes to stuff like this within and without the Imperial core, you know, it's like a kind of cultural protectionism, which like, I mean, what's the alternative, right? Like having Western companies selling like white people holding Coca-Cola bottles to every African country. Clearly there's got, like, it's an extension of imperialism, you know, de facto. So I'm glad they did that. I, the New York Times should be ashamed of themselves for their... Sorry, I'm rambling now. I never talked about this with streams, so I'm trying to explain it to them as well. But yeah, no, 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 no. You're doing you're you're doing good because I actually wasn't fully aware of the the um, scope of that. But kind of like r rolling it back to what we're what we were going at, what we were talking about before about like American privilege versus white privilege. Do you see what I mean? I mean, I guess you could say general Western privilege, but I think when they you say general Western, you mean white. Because I don't think that the black people in the West get those same privileges that light skinned people, like white people do, right? They definitely Even when don't. wealthy. I would, I would, yeah, they definitely don't. They, I do still think they get something. There's a kind of general Western tourist privilege that might not carry over based on sight, but maybe through interaction. Usually, but I think that might be more of a wealth thing. If you're a Westerner who's traveling yeah. to like India, you're obviously going to be wealthier than the majority of people there. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's like that in China too. Because I've heard claims that a lot of like varying racism from China. But if you're if you're in China, like they fucking love Western tourists. We bring a ton of money and also it legitimizes China. Um, you know, it's 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 one of the ways they've tried to distinguish themselves from Russia as well with the whole like post Cold War fake, uh, you know, c collaboration with the West. Um, so so I think they, they you know, they're, they're generally pretty impressed by the presence of Westerners and but they also tend to be pretty racist. So yeah, I don't know. It's pretty complicated. Yeah, yeah because I think the issue is that um, the West, because the West, the reason where, the, the place where they get a lot of this um, um, colorist hierarchy, the ideas, the the stereotypes about this colorist hierarchy comes from the West. So like, it, 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 we say that, but like, if I'm a, if I may, if we go back to India, if I dress in what we would call stereotypical, let's call it urban gangster clothes as a black person in that area, they even, even though that you and I may know that might mean I have money, especially considering the fact that I flew here from another country, that person still gets shit on because there's the idea that like hood culture universally around the world, hood culture is looked down upon. Right. And that comes from an American cultural dominance. Right. That's true. Though there is an element of classism to that as well. Absolutely. Um, because, absolutely. Because, you know, hood culture, however it manifests in any country, all countries have classist um, hierarchies because all countries are mm. capitalist. So there's always going to be a bias in that direction. Um, mm -hmm. e even if I don't, is there any country in the world where white people are an explicit underclass? Um, no, that's, that's like the point. Like there's no, it, there there's are, tends to be nowhere in the world that I can stop being black either. Weird. Well, well, yeah, you know, you could, you could always, you know, paint yourself white. Like, come on, there's always, a, there's always a way. No, to... Michael Jackson yeah. tried, and, and try as he might, nobody would accept that he was a white guy. Nah, no one would. If, if MJ in the 80s showed up in India, no, wait, fuck. If he wore a wide-brimmed hat and showed up in India, um, I don't know. I think he could have kept it going. You don't think so? Well, you don't believe? I maybe, maybe. we Like, that's an experiment that I think that the... Um... Well, the the cucks on the left, those liberal cucks, are just too pussy to actually run because True. we need to do this experiment. Wait, actually, wait. Unironically, though, okay, you need a control group. You need black mm. people and white people, like a couple of them both, to go to India and spend a week there and see how they get treated. Document the racism. Then we get them in the hotel room. We white and black face them respectively. Okay, full on head to toe. Uh, the the whole shebang. Hope they show up in the winter because otherwise it's going to be really warm. And then. They they see can can they tell can they can 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 the Indians figure it out how 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 you know uh, does does everything switch could be a good lesson too you know like the white people are like oh wow racism really does exist that'd be good yeah yeah I think it'd be I think it'd be interesting I think that stuff is interesting because if you were able to get away with being sufficiently black which isn't there a book like that I didn't read it but I I think that there's a reference to a guy that tried to do this. Um, but anyways, but I, I think that it is a good lesson because I think that a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of racism, because I think the way that you use racism when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about it with biases, by the way, it takes a lot of the sting out of it, but, um, it, which is important. I, I think that's a good thing. But I think that when people 
conceptualize racism. They just think the overt bigotry, right? The the overt, my race is better than yours, your race shouldn't exist sort of stuff. And re, in reality, most racism that we experience are the like accumulations of these small individual biases that tend to be pretty invisible unless you're that race. So I think those sorts of lessons are actually incredibly good, but you know, well, maybe, maybe we can repurpose the terminology and, um, we'll just go with racism's level one, two, three, and four. Um, you know, we'll, we'll just, we'll just sort of, we'll, we'll have like DEFCON theories, you know, we'll, we'll escalate it, uh, for higher. I was going to say like super Saiyan levels, like super Saiyan one, super Saiyan two. Yeah. What's the fucking God say power level okay. on that racism, you know? Some white guy <laughs> yeah. screaming the N word and everyone whips out their, um, their, uh, uh, what the fuck are they called? Power level? What the fuck are they called? What's the term for that? I've never seen Dragon Ball. For power level? So yeah, it's power scouter. level. It's literally where we got the term power level. The, the scouters? Yeah, the scouter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scouter. The, the green thing over the eye. Yeah. What's uh, the racism on this guy? It's over 9,000. Yeah. If only we could yeah. quantify it directly, then people would know that I shouldn't be watched. All right. Uh, this has gone on well, for nearly two hours. I have a conversation with my collaborative uh progressive yeah, victory yeah, yeah. 2022 partners in uh 15 minutes i gotta get to that yeah we're good we're good and on that on on that point this is why this is why i opened up by saying i don't think that your views on racism are like people attacking you as if you are a racist i think that us talking about these differences is something that is of two people that are generally so close that it's um, why why somebody would think that my audience would be going after you or something like that is 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 insane and also keep up the good work i see some of the stuff that you're doing i see that you're trying to apply some praxis to your stuff like hats off to you bro and and way to keep up the um way to keep up the audience like i am i am genuinely in shock i didn't get a single troll from you after interacting with you so kudos my man yeah, hopefully we'll keep the trend up i always like talking to you too yeah just um it's 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 good to talk hopefully we'll again in the future and if there's ever the great, uh, the great race war, and I'm uh, innocent and pregnant and unarmed, just make sure you don't kill me, okay? I got you. I'll be the one that it'll be my baby. So <laughs> you have a good day, man. <laughs> you too. Uh, that was good. I like talking to uh, Aston. <laughs>